two data sets of 23 integers each are summarized in the histograms shown. For each of the histograms, the first interval represents the frequency of integers greater than or equal to 10 but less than 20. The second interval represents the frequency of integers greater than or equal to 20 but less than 30 and so on. What is the smallest possible difference between the mean of data, data set A and the mean of data set B? There's a lot going on here. All right, so let's start by just making sure we understand what these histograms mean. Okay, so there's two data sets of 23 integers. All right, so we have data set A and B. And in each of these data sets, there are 23 numbers. They each have 23 numbers in them. And they're all integers, so there's no fractions, there's no decimals. They are just nice, round, lovely numbers. So they're summarizing. They're looking at these data sets, and they're summarizing them. So the first interval, when they say the first interval, it means this first area here represents the frequency of integers greater than or equal to 10 but less than 20. So right here what they did is they looked at data set A and they said, okay, I'm looking at all these 23 numbers. How many numbers are between 10 and 19? And they didn't find any, so they didn't put anything there. But when they looked at B, they said, ah, there are three numbers in data set B that are between 10 and 19. And then they went on. The next one, how many numbers are there between 20 and 29. Okay, in data set A there are three of those, in data set B there are four of those, and they just kept going. All right, so now they're asking what is the smallest possible difference between the mean of data set A and the mean of data set B? How do we find the mean of a set of numbers? Like say if I had two, three, and six, how would I find the mean? I'm going to add those together, and then I'm going to divide by the number of terms. So I had one, two, three terms. So two plus three plus six is 11, and I would divide 11 by three, which would give me three and two thirds, and that would be my mean. That's how we find a mean. So for these data sets, to find the mean, so for A, I'm gonna take all these 23 numbers, add them all together, and then I would divide by 23. And same with B, I'm gonna add those 23 numbers together and divide by 23. And they're wanting me to know it's the smallest possible difference. So I want these two sums on top to be as close as humanly possible. How could I do that? Well, over here, data set A, you see how it has higher numbers in it. It's got numbers up in the 50s. It doesn't have any in the 10s. What about data set B? It's got lower numbers. We've got numbers in the teens, but we don't have any numbers in the 60s, in the 50s, excuse me. So if we want to make them close, we want to make data set A as low as possible, the low end of all these ranges. We want data set B to be as high as possible, the highest possible, so they can be close. So let's write down what is what are the possibilities. Okay, for data set A, let's say, okay, there's no numbers from 10 to 19, but there are three numbers from 20 to 29, and we want this to be low. Remember, Data set A, we want to be low. Okay, so there's three numbers, and I'm going to say all of them are 20, the lowest possible value. So 20 plus 20 plus 20, which I'm shorthanding to write three times 20. Then my next group, my next interval, the lowest possible value there is 30, and there are four of them. So four times 30. And the next one, we got from 40 to 49, and there's seven of them. The lowest possible value would be 40, so seven times 40. Okay, and then our last interval here is from 50 to 59, and there are nine of them. So nine times 50. I'm dividing all of this by 23. Okay, now for B, what is in B? B, this lowest group that I have here, I have three of them. I want to be as high as possible. So go from 10 to 19, so three times 19. Next one, it can go from 20 to 29, the next interval. I want to be as high as possible, so it's gonna be 29, and we got four of those. 
Next interval can be from 30 to 39. I want it to be as high as possible, and we've got seven of those. I have people that like patterns in the, in the audience. They're probably seeing a pattern emerging here. And then for our last interval, 40 to 49, the highest possible is 49, and we have nine of those. Okay, and to average all those together, we would divide by 23. Now, there's two ways that you can do this. They are both right. One is a lot faster, but if you don't see this, it's okay. You can do it the longer way. Don't worry about it. Like if you get this problem on the test and you're like, oh, I didn't see the shortcut, it's fine. Totally fine. Just be careful. So the long way is to type all of this into your calculator. Be very careful with it. If you're wanting to do it all in one go, I would recommend doing parentheses outside of those two and doing like parentheses, then parentheses three times 20, parentheses plus parentheses. Type it all in, make sure you have those exterior parentheses and then divide by 23 and then do the same for B. And then see what your two averages are and how close are they? What's the difference between them? And that would be your answer. And that's totally fine. That will get you the right answer. Here's the sort of eureka moment. And the SAT honestly used to have a lot more of these, what I call eureka problems, where you have to have this sort of epiphany to go like, oh, I see what you're doing. Like it's a puzzle. They're not as many, but they're still there. And this is one of them. Look at how close these are. We've got three times 20 and three times 19. Four times 30 and four times 29. Seven times 40, seven times 39. Nine times 50, nine times 49. What is going to be the difference between these two sums? Here I have 20 threes. Here I have 19 threes. That is a difference of a single three. Here I have 30 fours and here I have 29 fours. What's the difference between them? This one is one four less. Next one, seven forties, excuse me, 40 sevens <laughs> is the way to look at this and 39 sevens. How many? What's the difference there? A seven. This one has fewer sevens. And finally, we have 50. Whoa, no, not highlight, not erase. 50 nines and 49 nines. This one has one fewer nines. So this number on the bottom is three plus four plus seven plus nine smaller. And if you add that up, you get 23. And what is 23 divided by 23? One. So this number on the bottom is 23 smaller than this on the top. And 23 divided by 23, because we're going to divide both numbers by 23, is one. And that's B. Again, if you have that sort of little like, wait a minute moment, and you see this pattern emerging, that's great. And you can do this a little more quickly. But again, also you have a calculator. And if you're just doing this, totally fine as well. You still will get the answer when you get these uh, two averages, these two means. They will be one apart from each other. So our answer is B. Hey guys, if you want to help me keep making these videos, please check out my Spreadshop and Etsy stores. Links are down below where you can find fun things like this slightly sarcastic coffee mug or this slightly arrogant sweatshirt. <laughs> and if this was helpful or useful in any way, please let YouTube know so I can keep helping you and others like you. Comment, like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.